Hi, this is Jan Fratt. I'd like to read you The Nutcracker, my new book. Sounds like Christmas. Smells like Christmas. It is Christmas, Marie laughed. Thumps and bumps and jingling bells. I'm ready, whooped her brother Fritz. The doors opened to a magical Christmas party, but Marie could never have guessed how magical. Not far away, Uncle Drosselmeyer was gathering the curious creations he had fashioned for Christmas Eve. Uncle Drosselmeyer wheeled in three mysterious boxes. Inside were a trickster and two harlequins. With a turn of his key and a whirr whirr and a hum hum hum, they danced. The figures were so lifelike, everyone wanted to join the fun and dance along. But Marie was enthralled by the nutcracker her uncle had placed under the tree. He looks like a real boy, she mused, who has traveled from a place far away. The party goers danced to the grand march and the quadrille and applauded the beautiful music. Uncle Drosselmeyer arrived at Marie's side. He placed a hazelnut in the nutcracker's mouth. Quack! Out came a perfect nut. Marie beamed. What a surprising fellow he is, she thought. It was late when Marie's mother pleaded with her to say good night to the guests, but Marie would not leave the nutcracker. Fritz, waiting to see how he worked, had broken the nutcracker and Marie was helping him get better. When the house was silent, Marie lay awake in her bed. I better go and check on the nutcracker, she thought. She tiptoed past uncle's old carved clock with a watchful owl on top. In the eerie light, Marie felt awed as the old clock, bong, chimed 12, bong. She seemed to be getting smaller, bong, or everything around her was getting bigger, bong. Strange sounds were coming from inside the walls. Squitchy, scratchy sounds, squitchy, scratch, squitchy, squeak, squitchy, squeak. Then Marie saw a mouse as almost as big as she was, and it wore a glittery crown. Slowly, the old gilded cabinet beside her, holding uncle's wonderful gifts from times past, creaked open. The figures inside moved as if waking up, and Marie heard the sounds of mice gathering at her back. Marie heard Fritz's toy soldiers were mustering forces. Then a strong, clear voice called, We will not stand for any mouse invasion and their wicked king. It was the Nutcracker, now a boy, and on his feet and on the move. It was a ferocious battle. The Nutcracker jumped into the thick of it. Crunch! The soldiers marched and the mice pounced. Then... The Mouse King leaped upon the Nutcracker. Brave Marie, she reached for her slipper and, exacting aim, toppled the wicked Mouse King with one blow. The Nutcracker was saved. The battle was won and the wicked Mouse King was vanquished. The soldiers formed a hero's march and Marie and the Nutcracker walked through. At the end of the arch, Marie whispered, What is this? For inside the cabinet, the door to the gingerbread house inside was open. A sleigh was waiting for them, and Marie and the Nutcracker stepped in. A wintry figure beckoned them forward as she danced among the snowflakes. The sleigh glided through a dreamland of icicles 
and they heard lively music, Moto Vivace playing. Dancing bears performed the Russian Trepak, and all thoughts of the battle and the Mouse King disappeared as the music reached their ears, their hearts, and down to their very toes. They leaped higher and higher until the one with a twinkle in his eye lifted Marie skyward before gently placing her on the sleigh. Next, they were gliding through a birch copse. The wintry lady escorted them to a sparkling clearing where two elegant foxes performed the danse a rive, their tails entwining. Marie, standing on her toes, imagined the, the handsome foxes spinning her as part of the dance. When the foxes bowed towards the lady and the nutcracker applauded, Marie exclaimed, she must be the princess of this land. As a sleigh followed the snow princess, the treetops suddenly exploded. A large creature careened towards them, sprinkling the woodland with dazzling snow crystals. The dragon's breath was harumphing out a song. Humpa, 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 humpa. With great fanfare, two flying squirrels leaped off its back and invited Marie and the Nutcracker for a cup of tea from their samovar. As the sky grew colder and the color of a sugar plum and the snow became many shades of blue, hundreds of tiny flames appeared and lanterns illuminated their path. Antlered friends played flutes and led them towards the gingerbread house. The Nutcracker smiled at Marie, his eyes happy and sad at the same time, like the music. Are we headed back already? asked Marie. Not quite yet, whispered the Snow Princess. They peered through the gingerbread windows at bouquets of spring flowers swooping and twirling to the walls. But they saw there were also bristling prickles. Hey, I thought hedgehogs slept through the winter, Marie laughed. You just have to find the gingerbread palace to see them, answered the nutcracker. The snow princess smiled. We have an even bigger surprise ready for you. The gingerbread doors opened. The animal orchestra performed the Waltz of the Flowers. Candy cane elves and fairies danced for the Nutcracker to celebrate his bravery for standing up to the wicked Mouse King. Mother Ginger and her chicks thanked Marie for throwing the slipper that changed the course of the battle. The Celestis twinkly notes and the whirling dancing made Marie's imagination take flight for what seemed hours. As her eyelids and the nutcrackers grew heavy, the doors to the old cabinet creaked open and beckoned them over back to Marie's house. The next morning, Marie was happy to wake up to her mother's loving face and Fritz's mischievous smile. Nutcracker was by her side, and almost everything was as before. But from that day forward, even when she was grown, if she heard the sounds of the Celesta, she felt that she and the Nutcracker were back in the land of the Snow Princess once more. The End. <laughs>